Fultz, an intense pleasure to moderate uh, this panel. We've got two excellent speakers here who actually know what they're talking about, and uh, that's a good thing, right? Because sometimes when you hear speakers, they don't really know what they're talking about. But these guys are experts in the subject, and uh, I'd just like to make a few introductory comments, and I'll turn it over to them, because they're the, the main show here. I think that the right in America has two blind spots. Uh, one is war and one is executive power. And of course, they both come together in the Patriot Act. The Patriot Act was uh, passed during the, the aftermath of 9-11 and in the war on terror. And of course, uh, uh, we all know, I don't think the people in this room need, to, need, any, need any instruction that war is the biggest cause of big government in human history. And that includes pushing government into domestic spheres that uh, it's, it's not accustomed to going in. And one of them is the erosion of civil liberties. Um, if you recall, uh, and one of the problems I have with the ACLU is they do good work, except that they, they duck the war issue. Uh, it's as if, you know, the erosion of civil liberties just happens. Uh, uh, and so I think uh, we need to remind ourselves of that. Uh, you know, we have a history in the United States of the quasi-war with France brought the Alien and Sedition Act. Uh, we have the uh, Civil War, which of course uh, Lincoln closed down newspapers, threw newspaper editors in jail, uh, eliminated ha habeas corpus. Uh, and of course, World War I, we went to some of the most draconian uh, civil liberties restrictions. Uh, people were jailed for dissent against the war and, and uh, impeding the draft. Uh, and then we went to World War II and uh, there was some retrenchment on civil liberties violations simply because of the horror of World War I. But of course, that was small comfort to the Japanese and uh, uh, Japanese Americans who were rounded up and put in uh, camp. And of course, we never None, no case of sabotage or espionage on the part of any one of those uh, uh, people incarcerated was ever, was ever brought, uh, it was even in, uh, uh, accused. So then we get to the Korean War, and of course we had the McCarthy hearings as a result of that. Uh, we go to the Vietnam War where uh, the anti-war groups were spied upon by the Army, the FBI, and other agencies. Of course, the Cold War in general, um, brought the national security state and the imperial presidency starting in, at Harry Truman. And of course, uh, what we're going to be talking about today is the war on terror and uh, uh, George Bush's uh, uh, erosion of habeas corpus, uh, domestic spying, torture, etc. Uh, and I think, you know, uh, the conservatives uh, often talk about freedom in general, but the problem is uh, uh, being for in, in practice or in specifics. You know, when you start um, defending uh, the rights of accused terrorists, uh, the evaporation of the freedom talk goes away really fast. And I think we're only as strong as strong uh, freedom and liberty-wise if we can defend uh, people accused of heinous crimes and, and uh, defend their rights because, of course, their rights are really our rights in the long term. Uh, now, of course, <laughs> gee, I didn't know I was going to get, get an applause line in my speech, but uh, so I'll just briefly summarize what the Patriot Act uh, did, and then I'll turn it over to our speakers. Of course, uh, the, the act dramatically reduced restrictions on law enforcement agencies' uh, ability to search telephone, email, communications, medical, financial, and other records. Uh, ease restrictions uh, on foreign intelligence <coughs> gathering within the United States uh, that is spying on U.S. citizens, expanded the Secretary of Treasury's authority to regulate financial transactions, and if you noticed yesterday's New York Times, uh, they're now using the Patriot Act uh, uh, for money laundering against uh, alleged Hezbollah uh, uh, money laundering for drug purposes. Of course, the, the connections to the Hezbollah terrorist group itself are a little bit tenuous, but uh, as it's mentioned deep in the article, but this is the type of thing. Uh, also, um, uh, the broadening the discretion of law enforcement and immigration authorities in detaining and deporting immigrants uh, suspected of terrorism-related acts, and uh, finally, it also expanded the definition of terrorism to include domestic terrorism, 
of course, thus enlarging the number of activities for which the Patriot Act um, expanded law enforcement powers that you can apply to all these new areas that are now called domestic terrorism. So I think uh, um, with that, uh, they're going to discuss the details of this and, uh, you know, the reauthorizations and what's going on now. And we had, uh, as was just mentioned, we've had uh, new developments. And, you know, for once you can say maybe something positive happened on this whole front, and, uh, um, which was just discussed. But I'll, I'll uh, introduce our panelists and then let them get to work. Uh, our first speaker is going to be Jim Bovard. Uh, who uh, is an author, a well-known author on many books on liberty. His uh, current book is Attention Deficit Democracy. And he's also, you know, been denounced by the head of the FBI, the Secretary of Commerce, the head of DEA, and the Secretary of Labor, the Postmaster General, maybe even thrown out of a few DC bars. I don't know. But, uh, <laughs> 